Welcome to our next live class. We will talk about the two-way prepositions. Uh, in German, we call them Wechselpräpositionen. You might also know them under the term two-case prepositions, which is two-way prepositions. Yeah, I call them this way. Um, two-case prepositions, or in German, Wechselpräpositionen. It's a slightly advanced topic, so if you've never heard of the German cases, like nominative or at least accusative and dative, then you might have trouble getting this today, but let's give it a try. Maybe I can make it even understandable for a total beginner. Would be nice. I always like such a challenge. I will share my screen with you now. I have prepared a little presentation, and I will just talk you through it. And that should last not longer than 20, maybe 30 minutes. And afterwards, you can ask a couple of questions. I, I'm happy to stay a bit longer, yeah, to see what I can do for you. Okay, let me quickly share my screen. Here we are. Uh, Wechselpräpositionen. They are called Wechselpräpositionen, changing prepositions, because they can come with accusative and dative. Accusative and dative are usually associated with two questions that you might have heard from your teacher, which is wohin, where to, very literally, and wo for the dative, which means where. Unfortunately, in English, unfortunately in English, you do not use where to. You say, where do you go? Or where did you put your mobile? And therefore, these questions in German are rather difficult to use. Yeah? And I would rather uh, that you get a feeling for what is a what is a direction or what is a position? Okay. The sentence, I lie in my bed. Maybe you remember from my verbal presentation a couple of minutes ago, um, whether that was a direction or position. I speed this up a little bit. If you imagine someone lying in bed, do you think that's rather a directional movement, a direction, or is it something static, a static position? Yeah? Of course, it's a position. No one is moving. Once you're in bed, you shouldn't move. You should lie there and sleep. Next example, I put my glasses onto the table. If you put something somewhere, it's obviously a movement, and every movement has a direction, except when you dance widely in the disco. But that's not the movement we're talking about. So it's a direction. If you say, I live on Elm Street, or in German, we would say, I live on the Elm Street, that's a position. Hang the picture on the wall. You hang it there, that means you move your arms towards the wall, and therefore it's a direction. My brother lives above an old woman. He's living there, his flat doesn't move, so it's a position. Last example for the first slide. I stick my finger in my nose. Are you moving it towards your nose, or is it stuck there already? That's a direction. A couple of more quickly. The sausage again, I put a sausage on my plate. You put it there, it's a direction. And you sit down on a chair. Your behind is moving downwards onto the surface of a chair. It's a direction as well. My mobile is in my pocket. Is it stuck there or are you sticking it there? It's a position. And I place my towel on a beach chair. It's not yet there. You're putting it there, hence it's a direction. See, hopefully this is easy for you because that will simplify the whole matter to you, for you. I stand at the corner, you're standing there, you're not moving, you're waiting for someone. If you move, he will not find you. It's a position. My mother works in a factory. Yeah, the factory doesn't move, your mother is inside. It's a position. So this is important because direction sounds like action, which reminds me of accusative. So anything that you associate intuitively with a direction uses the accusative. I'll give you some examples soon. And then we have a position that is associated, associated with dative. There's a group of verbs, uh, I call them twin verbs because they're very alike, um, which help you to identify which one to use should you hear the difference. There's legen, which means to put. There's stellen, which also means to put. And that's in which means to put. I know there is English words for these, but no one uses these. So I decided against giving you the translations. 
I rather give you a more intuitive explanation. Legen, for example, is the action that results in the position liegen, which means to lie. My mobile lies on the table or is lying on the table. Stellen is the action which relies, which leads to the position of stehen, to stand. Yeah, I stand at the corner. Setzen is the action that leads to the position sitzen, to sit. Yeah. There's also a couple of verbs that are generally associated with accusative if you use the wechselt preposition, not otherwise, please. Common, for example, common to come requires that there's a point A from which you come to point B. Hang in the same. We did this with the image we put on the wall. And with dative, uh, with a fixed position, we associate sein to be. I am at home. I'm not moving from there. And wohnen means to habit, to live. Leben means to live. It's a bit stronger than wohnen. And hangen means to hang. Once you have hung something onto the wall, it's hanging there. So that is also associated with dative. Now, Übung macht den Meister. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, we are now there where the presentation actually started. Now, let me test you. Or t you test yourself. Ich liege in mein oder in meinem Bett. I lie in my bed. Mine, the blue one is accusative. Meinem would be dative. If you say I lie in my bed, is that a direction or is it a position? If it's a direction, you need the blue answer. If it's a position, you need the red one. Make a quick guess. I push the button and you will see the answer. My name is correct. If you lie in your bed, we had that example, there is um, no movement. Next example. Ich stelle meinen Koffer in den oder dem Schrank. So I place my or I put my suitcase into the wardrobe. Is that a movement or is that a position? Is it accusative or dative? Three to one. As you are putting it there, you move it there, so it's Schrank needs to be accusative. Ich lege eine Wurst auf den oder dem Teller. You're legging it there. Uh, you're, sorry, I did not say I put a sausage onto my plate. My apologies. So if you put it there, it is an action, hence you need the accusative. Das Bild hängt an eine or einer Wand. The picture hangs on a wall. If it's hanging there, it's already there. No one puts it there. So it's a position. You need the dative. Mein Bruder steht an die or der Ecke. My brother stands at the or the corner. English is so much easier, right? Only in this case, though. So he's standing there. My brother stands at the corner. That means it's a position. Last test. Ich lege die Brille neben das oder dem Glas. I put the glasses next to the glass. If you put it there, it's a direction, hence the accusative. I hope you understand how simple this actually is. But this is understanding. Understanding is always simpler than practicing. And therefore, I would like to introduce you to a way to master this on your, almost on your own with a little bit of practice. You can do this with, in a couple of days, and you will never have any issues with the two-way prepositions again. Um, I call this technique preaching because you will repeat something over and over again until you believe it. And of course, when you believe it, others might also believe you. Um, you should only do this after you've mastered the accusative, after you know what the accusative actually is. But we'll see. Maybe you can even use it without that knowledge. Preaching means you have a couple of keywords. I call them triggers because they will trigger a memory of a whole grammatically correct sentence. And one of these um, triggers is, for example, bet, which is bad. Now, when you look these, come up with these keywords, um, in this topic, it makes sense to have keywords that describe a 
position, a potential position, like a bed is a potential position. You could put things on your bed or in your bed. You could have a wall, you could have a wardrobe, a fridge, a windowsill, a bench, so places. You need to look up the gender and you need to learn that gender. Look up my superhero technique, also part of my grammar course, but there's also a video on YouTube or on my homepage as a free preview. Uh, the superhero technique is the most beautiful technique to learn the German genders. You don't need anything else, and you will have intuitive knowledge of the uh, genders. So bed is neuter. Now, how do you preach this? When you see the word bed, the first thing you do is you put something on your bed. And you will remember, when you put something there, yeah, for example, your sweater, ich lege meinen Pullover, I put my sweater, and you have legen, which is the action that results in liegen, to lie. So when you put it there, you need the accusative. Ich lege meinen Pullover auf das Bett. The next thing you do, once you have put it there, you drop it. You just don't touch it anymore, and it's lying there without moving. And you say, mein Pullover liegt jetzt, my pullover is now lying auf dem Bett, the dative. Notice one thing, I've highlighted a couple of words, orange. The orange means that is the subject, the who of the sentence, who is putting the pullover where. And uh, the second one is who is lying on the bed or what is lying on the bed. That's the subject. So in the accusative sentence, there's always a person putting something somewhere while in the dative sentence, there's one thing lying somewhere. So it's one element less. Yeah, the ich is, has gone home. After I drop my pullover on the bed, I'm not necessary anymore. So one example for you, one last example, then we are through with the presentation and we come to the questions. Boden, which means floor and is masculine. How would you say, I put my pullover onto the floor? I give you a second to do it yourself. Ich lege meinen Pullover. And on the floor is always auf. Auf den Boden. Which is accusative, because you put it there. It's a directional movement. Last. And now, after you dropped it, it's lying there without moving. Mein Pullover liegt jetzt. Auf dem Boden. This is a quick introduction to this, and hopefully it made you, you understand the beauty of this. You don't have to ask wo wohin. You have a feeling, natural feeling for what is a direction, what is a position. Uh, let me get back to you and have this beautiful endless. Yeah. If you do this every day, you write down five positions and you or you just walk around with your mobile and say, okay, I put my mobile on my hand and then you drop it carefully. My mobile is now on my hand. In German, ich lege mein Handy auf meine Hand. And when you drop it, mein Handy liegt jetzt auf meiner Hand. And you can do that all day. You can also do that just in your mind. You can also put elephants on your hand. This is an elephant. Yeah, I put an elephant on my hand. Now an elephant is on my hand. Use your fantasy. You don't have to go to the zoo and steal an elephant. This is what I wanted to share with you. You might have to watch this again a bit slower. Um, you just forward to the point where you can see the presentation, please. It's always a bit tricky to cut these things afterwards. Is there anything unclear? Do you have any questions remaining the two-way prepositions? Yeah? Should there be any questions? I'm more than happy to read them now. The chat window is visible again, Alexandra. Um, let me know. Okay. Dankeschön. Radu is asking, können Sie etwas über das Verb stecken erzählen? I can absolutely tell you a lot about stecken and hängen. Um, Stecken simply means to stick, and you can stick things into holes. Yeah, so I can stick my finger in my mouth, and now my finger is sticking in my mouth. Hard to speak while. So, stecken is the same for accusative and dative, it doesn't change. It's none of these twin verbs, but it appears on both sides. So, if you put something actively, if you stick something actively in your mouth or your ear, 
Ich stecke den Kopfhörer in mein Ohr. Uh, it's accusative. And if it's there without moving, it's in a position, so it's dative. And the same is for hanging. Patrick is asking, how many times repetition is necessary for each grammar point? Well, Patrick, that depends on you. It depends on how fast your brain processes that information. Um, there is, I haven't come across any studies saying you need to do that 100 times or 200 times. But you have to understand, every time you do something right, you do like, you say, I, ich stelle mein Handy auf meine Hand, a connection in your brain is made. It's a very weak one the first time. Um, your neurons are connecting at certain points, which are called synapses. And the more often you do that, the better the connection, the stronger the connection, and the more likely it will last for a long time. If you use it less and less and less, it might weaken, but it might never get completely separated again. So use it for a while, and at a certain point, it will never get apart again. So find out what is the ideal amount of repetition for you. You will actually feel that when you do these things without thinking. <laughs>